Specialist Enrique Roman Martinez was a paratrooper and human resource specialist assigned to the 82nd Airborne Division at Fort Bragg in North Carolina in May of 2020. The 21-year-old was from Chino, California, and had two older sisters. His mother, Maria, raised her three children largely on her own and worked two jobs to support them. Enrique had joined the Army at the age of 17, despite concerns held by his family. He was aware of the potential risks, but hoped that his time serving his country would instill discipline and responsibility in him, as well as provide him with the means to eventually attend college. He had a difficult time following his father's deportation when Enrique was just 11 years old, and eventually his grades started to suffer. Enrique believed that the character development and college benefits he would receive from the Army would put him back on track to achieve his goals. He received numerous decorations during his service, including the Army Good Conduct Medal and the National Defense Service Medal. Enrique had been a shy child who became more social as he grew up, but he was still somewhat of an introvert. It took some time for him to open up to others, but he was quick to cheer up anyone who was feeling down. He was somewhat of a homebody, liking to stay home and play video games. As a result of his sweet and caring nature, he did not like confrontation. For Memorial Day weekend of 2020, Enrique went camping with seven other soldiers, six men and one woman, on South Core Banks, a small island off the coast of North Carolina that is a part of the Cape Lookout National Seashore. He was last seen alive at their campsite near Mile Marker 46, just before midnight on Friday, May 22nd. At 7 p.m. the following day, 19 hours after Enrique was last seen, one of the other soldiers he had been camping with called 911 to report him missing. The other campers claimed that Enrique had walked away from their campsite just before midnight, wearing nothing but a pair of blue shorts. Enrique's phone, wallet, eyeglasses, and other belongings were all found at the campsite. The soldier who called 911 told the dispatcher that they had gone to bed at 12.03 a.m. Saturday morning and that Enrique was still gone when they woke up. And when was the last time you saw him? So we all went to bed at 12.03, and that is the last time we saw him. The caller also told the dispatcher that the group had spent all day looking for Enrique and trying to find park rangers to ask for help without success. When we woke up, he was not here, and we've been looking for him all day. We were trying to find the park ranger or we, their offices or anything. However, there was a problem with this assertion. Between 1 and 2 p.m., the group had been approached by two park rangers who asked them to move their vehicles, which were illegally parked too close to the sand dunes. The rangers were clearly rangers, dressed in park ranger uniforms and driving marked vehicles. The group agreed to move their cars, but no one in the group informed the park rangers that a member of their party was missing. The caller also claimed that he had reason to believe that Enrique had harmed himself. We might be afraid that he might have hurt himself, but we're, we're really not sure. He, he wasn't diagnosed, but he did have suicidal tendencies. Enrique's family has vehemently denied this claim. Enrique's sister Griselda has said that the tone of her conversations with her brother had changed over the previous year, but this change was because Enrique was focused on his future plans with his family, not because he no longer wanted to have a future. Enrique had been unhappy living in North Carolina because he was anxious to return home to his family and begin the next chapter of his life. He was less than a year away from completing his service with the Army. He was scheduled to receive a medical discharge because he suffered from chronic compartment syndrome in his legs, a condition which limited his ability to run for long distances. He had the option of undergoing surgery to try to correct the problem, but the success of such a surgery was not guaranteed. Enrique planned to instead take the medical discharge and move back to California to be with his family and use his military benefits to enroll in college where he wanted to study pharmacology and psychology. He hoped to one day have a career providing medical treatments for individuals suffering from mental illness. He also had a more short-term dream of taking a trip to Japan with his sister Griselda. Enrique had already made plans to move in with Griselda when he returned to California. He had talked to her just two days before he went missing, and the siblings had discussed how they would set up his bedroom and what kind of car he wanted to buy when he got back to California. 
While it can be argued that Enrique's family was not qualified to declare him free of any serious mental illness, the same amount of skepticism should be applied to the other soldier's ability to diagnose Enrique as suicidal. Griselda and her mother Maria traveled to North Carolina as soon as they heard that Enrique was missing. When they arrived at South Corps Banks, they became even more convinced that Enrique had not simply wandered off into the night. There were no wooded areas or dense vegetation that could have hidden Enrique in the immediate area where he was last seen. According to park ranger Nate Toring, it is very difficult to get lost on the island for a long period of time without some sort of extenuating circumstance because of the island's geography. While the island is 26 miles long, it is very narrow, with little interior land to disappear into. Enrique's family was also alarmed by the fact that he had left the campsite without his glasses. He could not see without them, and would have had an even more difficult time without them while it was dark outside. A massive search was launched for Enrique. Multiple agencies searched the area, beginning at the campsite and working out from there, from the air and on the ground. The ocean and nearby sounds were also searched. The Army Criminal Investigation Command, the Coast Guard, the North Carolina Marine Patrol, the K-9 team from the Wayne County Sheriff's Office, and the Carteret County Sheriff's Office were all a part of the search. Unfortunately, several of the days following Enrique's disappearance were rainy and windy, leading to rough waters and complications for the search effort. Few clues were found over the following several days. On May 29th, partial human remains washed ashore on Shackleford Banks, another barrier island just west of South Core Banks. They were sent to the medical examiner's office, and a week later it was confirmed that the remains were of Enrique. His dental records were used to make the identification. The medical examiner's office ruled Enrique's death a homicide, and the Army Criminal Investigation Command is investigating it as such. They are currently offering a $25,000 reward for information that leads to the apprehension and conviction of Enrique's killer or killers. Because of their ongoing investigation, Army CID has released very little information about the case to the public in order to protect any possible future prosecution of whoever killed Enrique. Unfortunately, this also means that they have had to leave Enrique's family without many answers as well. An unnamed Army official did tell ABC News that there is no suspicion that the murder was a reprisal or hate crime. The medical examiner's office also told Griselda Martinez that her brother's injuries were consistent with dismemberment, rather than with coming in contact with a boat propeller or wildlife after he was in the water. There is not an animal in that sea that could have done that, she was told. While Army CID cannot provide them with information right now, Enrique's family believes that they are working diligently on Enrique's case. They also suspect that they may have a person of interest in the case, but not enough evidence to make an arrest. They have therefore been very active in the media, imploring anyone with information to come forward. Given the inconsistencies and problems with the account provided by the other soldiers Enrique was camping with, it seems most likely that a big break in the case will come from one of them providing a more complete statement. However, they are not the only potential witnesses. Because it was a holiday weekend, South Corps Banks was very busy at the time Enrique went missing. Park Ranger Nate Toring estimates that there were thousands of visitors to the island that weekend, any number of whom could have seen something that they did not realize was important at the time. According to his family's religious beliefs, Enrique's soul will not be at peace until his killer has been found. Enrique's mother Maria is too distraught to even sleep, and his sister Griselda is both haunted and pushed onward in her quest for justice by a conversation she had with Enrique many years before his death. He asked me one time, will you always be there to protect me? I said yes, Griselda recounted. Now that it's happened, it breaks my heart. I feel guilty that I couldn't protect him. The most I can do is find out what happened to him.